like, comment, and subscribe to Pharma Khalil YouTube channel. Go follow him on IG. Today's topic will speak about a long traditional livestock system beef production. This vlog was done and requested by Mr. Jerome. All right, guys. We're in. Where is, what is community name? Evergreen Manchester. Evergreen Manchester, and I want to point out some important forages for you. Um, everybody knows Spanish needle. You know Spanish needle, right? But you have, to me, you're very lucky. This one is what you call Centro Sonny's Stylus Antis. This. It's a high protein. The only thing I don't like is it have some prickles on it. But you have some without prickles. It was a very high... Jamaica is blessed with a lot of leguminous shrubs that can assist with providing protein to our animals. One such so is Stylus Antis Hamata, and we have a couple other varieties. And their board brought in Stylus Antis Genesis was one of those hybrid varieties that was that is known to do very good le um, leguminous hay, high protein hay, about 15%. So look out for it and don't destroy it in your past as it provides you with very good digestible nutrients for your animals. Stylus Antis. No, it wouldn't affect them. Where you can cut it just like where you can cut the Spanish the Spanish needle. Yeah. It can work. That's a very nice leg you want. And then out the front, you apply the moon master for cut and tie. Cut and tie. So the plan is, you cut down this tree, and it's took the goat out, and then it's there. Okay, so this is going to be a goat penny area. What size penny are you looking for? Um, I'm looking to gradually increase and increase, but I want to start from about uh, 20 width by 10. 20 by 10? Yeah. Length in the tent up to the moment, yes, but and 20 weight. Mm -hmm. So that the weight there will be constant going. That's it, I don't know if you have any. If that's, 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 that's fine. The only thing I tell you is to look where the sun, how the sun go over it, because you want sun in time from the size of the pen. So you don't want to, the sun allow it to dry. So in there, wet up, wet up. Yeah. You want the sun to can penetrate both where, sides. The rain can blow you. Ah, yeah, and that too, whichever way your, your, your rainfall normally comes from, you want to direct your pen to the opposite of that. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to wet them up. So just look for the sunlight, look for your rainfall, how it naturally blow, blow and build the longer side away from that direction. And to me, you find so you have space and you have longer, you have grass, you have great potential down here. So. Yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> you have it. You have land. <laughs> I don't know how to pass this big cow in the 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 shops them what they them eat. The shops them what they eat. Yeah. We'll go through it together, man, and I'll show you all them what you have. What you have can feed them. But you have, you have grass. You have so much grass, so yeah. much Spanish needle. Here, um, about to that. I'll construct the pen right here, so. And then they want to have this here, possibly can graze. Come out and graze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I want to talk to you about is that, what you said, what important is your, 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 your carrying capacity? Meaning, you say you're going to build up pastures, right? Yeah. And the amount of fodder you have in the pastures can tell you how much goat or how much cattle you can carry. You don't want to say, boy, all right, I'm going to do 10 acres and I'm going to have 20 cow. That not really work out. Because I put one cow to the acre. So I want to kind of, you whilst one, you kind of show me, say, boy, Khalil, I have 20 acres dedicated to pastures. This is what going to be for my cattle. This is what going to be for my sheep and goat or goat, and then we can see if it makes sense. That mm -hmm. is what you need to show me first. Alright, I'm going to use the same grass that I see here now to feed them. Cut and carry. Cut and carry. And you allow them to graze here. Yeah. And no, probably would I dedicate a section of this to grazing. To grazing and also. To cut and carry. To cut and carry. Okay. Alright. Alright. And then out in front would I be. I go plant the Mumbasa, mm -hmm. only be for the goats. Strictly only. for your goats. Strictly How much land that? 
Out the front? Oh, I'm not sure out the front how much of that. Alright, I'm going to show you something. You can go on Google Earth, yeah. tap your location, and Google Earth can measure the area for you. Mm. I'll show you on your phone. Yeah, I'm too familiar with that. So. Yeah, man, so you can measure it and have an idea. Yeah, I'm too have a little idea about your mum grass, mm -hmm. how you cut and carry. Uh -huh. How much days? Because grass grow really fast down here. Yeah, man, I see it. The environment seems cool and yeah, nice. Really fast down here. But I think we learned from one of your videos that is 10 goats per hectare, correct? Yeah, 10 goats per acre. Correct, yeah. Yeah. But if you're doing, if like the grass where you have here, this, this, this napier looking type of grass, because this is like napier grass to me. Yeah, napier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mostly napier mixed with Yeah, if you have this type of grass here, you can increase your carrying capacity to about 20 animals per acre. Because yeah. traditionally, yeah, traditionally yeah. when we were talking about 10 goats per acre was on low grass, like African star yeah. and mulatto. But with all this biomass that you have, you can probably carry 25 animals per acre based on the, the grass species that you have. So the grass species should determine how much oh, animals you can, can carry because of the, the volume it produces. Oh, so 20, um, so I look for 20. Yeah, yeah man, you can carry 25. To me, with this grass we have, you can carry 25, 25 yeah. to 30 animals per acre on, on, on this type of grass. And you'll be quite fine. I'm planning to start from about 4 or 3 goats, depending on the cut. But you're not really sure because you just are really up on the goat thing. You know, the grade is. Mm -hmm. You know, you are graded. You have the mix mm -hmm. and you have the pure red. Yeah, the pure red, yes. Yeah. So, my plan is to have a mix or a regular native and have a pure bread ram. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so I'm young in the knowledge, I'm not really. So, what would that be your advice? Uh, my advice to farmers who just coming into the business and one farm the other day, you must say, Yo, I'm ready, I'm going to do 100 goats. I'm like, brother, start small. Um, start with five, experiment, and I would say get a mix. I would focus on graded yeah. and native animals, yeah. and then I would probably try get a decent meal because once decent. I put them on, a decent meal would mean I would say I would not go for pure bread, yeah. but I would go for a highly graded meal, looking like him represent the breed, but you know, it's not somebody I tell me say you're hundred and sixty and thousand dollars for this animal. I'll go for the eighty thousand dollar one to start off with. And then, you know, I'll put that on and learn the process first. Um, go through a kidding season. Very important to see how the kid, how you manage the operation. And then, you know, I'll take my time and expand from there. So start with the natives um, and a decent meal and experiment from that. Look at how they eat. Look at how they behave in the environment because everybody environment different. Some animals just excel in hotter climates compared to probably what you have. We seem very humid and, you know, might be rain. It might have a lot of rainfall. In this type of place so start small natives highly graded then take your time and grow once you see you catch it and you see your mortality low and you see that you can manage them properly then you start expanding as as, as if your pocket can allow you to expand the animals then will require between the range the ranges the ranges between five to about 25 square feet depending on where they are in their stage of production so for a meal, you can give him a five by five, right? To make him stay one by himself. Meal. One meal. I give him a five by five, and that would be his era that can last him throughout time. Um, for your females, I'll give them something like five by four if it's individual pens. Um, per one, per one, you know. But if you want to do something massive, I can do a ten by ten pen. I can probably run ten females inside that comfortably. Or even 10 fattening animals comfortably throughout the 6 to 8 months period they work on Yeah, but during the process you probably have to go section off uh, Yeah, you have to do some sections I, yeah. I think that what is important is a section for your male A section for your female when she about to give birth And then you want a creeper era So the kids them can go and get access to them during separately I think those are the three main important separations they should have So, in constructing, right? Mm -hmm. You have, to, you have to have because you have to, you have to start with a, 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 a ram mm -hmm. in your process. So you have to have that section for him. Yes. Bye bye bye. Yes. Cool. But during that stage, you can have, like, say, a 10 by 10. A 10 by 10 and have your females inside. Yeah. Females. And when them about to have kid in a kidding season, you can section them apart and separate and put them. Them there, so yes. Or even that same 10 by 10, you can just probably make some small sections inside of there. 
uh, and kind of keep if it's one you know by herself just, uh, just for the time being you know because yeah. nothing wrong with having them in a group pen we just say well she can get angry she might be very protective of her kid and start a fight you don't want that so you want her company yeah, i think that's something in your in your, in your own way um a mother by buck another kid or kill another kid. yeah so that's a big issue that's why the separation is important because when they're heavy pregnant and them fight they can easily cause abortions um by booking each other so i recommend that by about it's five it's five months for the for the gestation period i would say about the last two months or the last month and a half you separate. want to separate her and one give her her time by herself or, you know if you, if your facility can allow you to do it earlier perfect but yeah. I say about two months from, from the due date, you want to separate her and have her done properly. Kind of get really slower. Get slower. Yeah. Um, well, if you probably need to do a soil test and see what is going on. Um, but probably just want some nitrogen, you can add back the manure to it. Yeah. But guys, this is the, the neighbor grass. If you look at it, it's a bit different. But it's all related to the, the same king grass, elephant grass. And what I like about the neighbor grass is that you get way more leaf being produced than the very thick stems you normally used to. So that is, I prefer this than the king grass using it for, for, for uh, based on the nutritional value I think you could get from a crop like this. Alright, so you guys know the, the African star also. And then you have this grass that people call the Christmas grass, but it's really caloris Ghana. You can make hay. Um, probably seven percent crude protein. I like the African star. It's a nice combination. And we have this amount of cow. I know grass. I know grass. Yeah. yeah so, so we have, we have to balance to it. Cut it back down. And I uh, work on the pasture. Then. Uh, okay. So much pastures you have really? Um, I know we have about six pastures. This is, this is the smallest one. The smaller one. Okay. In this Mumbasa. Yeah, but Mumbasa right so. Yeah, for the goats. For your yeah, goats then. Get the seed and buy the seed already so. Yeah, for the goats. So what a property over this so we're not going to work on. And a cow pasture. But the Mumbasa already goes strictly cutting me up with the Mumbasa. Cut and carry. Cut and carry. Lovely. Yeah. So what, wait, how much cattle you have? Uh, I know between 15 to 28. How old are you though? 21. Yeah, you see you look very very young. So at your age, why why are you doing cattle and goat farming? Uh, call it some born in a cattle, you know. Okay, your parents come man it down, come here. Not really, my grandfather still. Oh, gra grandfather eat some food. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Really, my grandfather. You come back with cattle. Yeah, man. For sure. This type of environment we have, conducive for growth. So from to your left, this property, mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a next pasture we're going to work on shortly. That's what I do for the cattle. That's going to be a cattle pasture. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to. So, the, the idea that we have in my head before we meet, um, we meet Cali Villain on YouTube was that you tie the goat them in a rope and you move them in the morning and you go back for them in the evening. That's the idea they have in my head. That's why I'm going to say, good things are no no for me. Too much time. Then now when we meet, we buck up and invade them by YouTube, me, I realize that it's a different way to do it. Yes. You have your houses, your pastures, then you can cut and carry, you can make silage, hay, all of that. So you have an easier operation, you can create an easier operation, an easier system. Yeah, yeah, I know what And that. also, if I know, say, from one of the you can possibly, you only require four hours a day to graze the goats. Yes. Four hours a great. If you have the pasture, four hours, and that. No my head me think like a whole day and if you tie goat out this or whole day and if it a row in order for them to feel. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad to say we, we are changing the landscape because I used to a lot, you know. A lot of farmers, older farmers too will call me and say, hey, you know, just like what you're saying, say boy, hey, the goat team used, used to tie goat a morning time, you know. But we never know say so the goat operation can run. So it, it's important to put out all this information out here. So we really can tap into the economic benefits uh, of something we do for so much years, you know. I don't know, we have to do it. Really a farming community, you know, it's just that you know, things got run down because you know, like back in my way and I really didn't export our organic oranges. 
Really? Oh yeah, and through the orange, I see I have a lot of old archers out here. Yeah. But the but the citrus bowl in this pen. But we have um fat for the market next year. But um previously when we, when we sell about realize I may get about thousand pounds, eleven hundred pounds. I really yeah. wanna get them over is twelve hundred. We'll get them to twelve hundred pounds. Yeah. And how long and you want them? How long you want to wear them, them for? Two years. Two years. At maturity, I want to get them up. See if we can get them up to two years. Right. Two years, probably two years or three months, but we don't want to keep them too long because, you know, keep them longer, keep them the cast. All right, and these are what breed? Red pole? We have a mix. We have a, real, we have a mix about red. We have brown, man. But a good breed. Good breed. Okay. All right. Look for the key up here. So guys, this is the Jamaican red pole and why we call it pole is because it do have any horn. Um, this breed was developed here in Jamaica. Um, T.P. Lecky, Dr. Carl Wellington, we can give a lot of credit to the overall development of this breed. This is predominantly our, our beef, our beef breed and they do excellent feed conversion. Um, Red pole and pastures are known to put on about 8 to 0 0.9 kgs average daily gain. And if you have them in a feedlot system, they can give you um, 1 kg to 1.5 kg. If you're looking at an animal, that can put on 3 pounds of meat daily. So we really and truly can get this animal up. We can put on 500 pounds on this animal in 170 days once you have them on a decent feedlot program um, we would probably have to say probably 200 days on a grass fed program to get 500 pounds on them give them the dough but they can have it but you wonder if the dough is not right they yeah, highly likely you probably do dough is not right and you put them back into a pasture that is reinfecting them yes. with cattle really the ticks it's a big thing as in commercial farms i know they do a lot of spraying like every month they might have to do a general spray for ticks and, and flea or so um my advice to you yes use the, the ivermic and the dover tech but you have to do some washing um so buy a knapsack spray and, and wash them down when you have the time it might hard to do it but uh, you know you have to you have to try This pineapple is nice though. Yeah, you can see them. Alright, not much. Once you have the, the amount of um, forage, as you say, mm -hmm. want to know how much um, green to add to that to get them up to the like, yes, Alright, how oh, is just a while ago I got a phone call from a farmer and was like, he has some steers at 600 pounds he wanted to get them up to a thousand pounds and i was saying i could get them up to a thousand pounds to him in in, a, in about 90 days just using a strict feedlot program where i'm saying all right i would use a ratio about 60 to 40 right 60 percent would be my forages and 40 percent would be my, my concentrate so so if you split that up into the ratio you see how much grass you need compared to concentrate. Cattle research has been going on for decades and we have a good quality set of data that can guide us on how to feed our animals. Important is the energy density of the diet, a balanced amino acids, minerals and vitamins and adequate water to have these animals growing properly. However, what is important is the intake and that's what we as Jamaican farmers lack is to know the amount required for these animals at each particular stage. So check out these statistics and try to follow them and you will see a significant improvement in your weight gains once you can achieve these goals. So about 11 pounds of that um, and the rest with forages um, for one animal. Um, I, can, I think I think that animal putting on about 2.53 pounds of meat daily. So I could get him to that thousand pounds in, in around, around 90 days. Um, 
I would my aim would not to get them to that one so quick still but mm -hmm. if you can get them gradually well, as we say the twelve hundred pounds at the time we already beat them to the market. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, if, it, if we have a program where in the last like two months mm -hmm. where we can apply the program there. Yes. And most of the program that we get them up. Alright, alright, alright. I'm gonna tell you how we normally feed we normally feed cattle this way. We give them a high energy diet during we want them to put on weight and then we finish them. Finish them now, we take off the fat and get them lean. And that's that's their behavior. So we have to put on some high energy feed for a couple months and then we can remove off this excess energy and allow them now to tone you and give you that nice that's, that's nice. I can't give you a jumping weight gain for two months. Okay. I forget I I get that that gradual increase over over probably a six months period. So that's that's how we're going to work it. Thousand pound strictly on grass fed animals. How yeah, long that good. take you? Two and a half, two and a half year, or less. I mean, two and a half years you're getting that thousand pound. That um, yes, not really reach two and a half. Not really but two years. For two years look good. Yeah. Two years I'll, it it fear. It fear, yes, because I would I would say double the time because if I can say I can get you three pounds on grass, I think you might the most you might get off of grass is probably um, a pound. A pound, a pound a day. It have to be good quality grass that they not you know you know go through the drought period. If they go through drought period, they lose all that weight. So two years, not bad. Um, not bad, and that will be a low cost operation. So, you know, the only thing we are really cost now is the grain. It's the grain. That's why we want to know how much to give an animal. So we you know overfeed uh -huh. and underfeed. I get you. I get you. I get you. Yeah. No problem. We we will look into that. Okay, so these up, up the now, one day now, the Okay, so these are your fatners. Okay, nice. Brahman, yes. It's a decent body condition. Yeah, not perfect, but it's not bad compared to what we normally see on the roadside. You know you have some some animals that they just the body condition poor. Hey, why are you looking at me like that? Hey. Yeah, they're not bad. The body condition not bad. Um, it could be better, but based on just being grass-fed animals, I can I think they're doing. They, they look really good. How old? How old are they? It will be two October. Two October. It will be two October. The grandma will be two in June. Okay. Um, well, I guess they're a little bit off from the, the mature weight. Um, but being grass with animals, I couldn't expect anything better. But well, they look good to me. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't complain. I would just add probably a little bit of greens more to the regime. Because I think having them too long to make, make, make a sense for you. Yeah, so you want, you want to know you have them at least for a year and a half and you're putting them out to the market, you know? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the issue I'm having right now because... You have to get them up to that they are weight. Yeah, if we make some food. Well we can make the adjustments, but what you need to invest in now? As I do how you weigh them, how you know they them weight? Wow, judge. A judge, and that's a big problem we have. Um you we need to find a way. There's a way you can use the tape. If you know I see that vlog where we could just yeah, no estimate really. the weight. Yeah, and then that could guide us now to adjust the diet to ah. to put on the weight gains that we want. So we have to make an estimate, but that animal to me, probably a clock 600, 700 pounds. Yeah, based on how him look. Yeah. It's what? Yeah, I know it's hard for us, but we have to invest in a scale. And once we're doing meat, we need to track what our daily gains are, because that is ultimately where, where our profit lies. Um, or we can use the weight tape and kind of give a guide to how the animal is progressing over the time and we use that now to judge how we want to feed them because if we have a timeline of one and a half year and if we realize that in a year time 
they're not giving us, they're not close to the, the, the mature weight that we want. We have to make some adjustments in the diet. Um, what can carry that animal up to, to, to say, boy, over two pound weight gain daily is concentrate. Grass really and truly cannot do that. Um, so that's where we as hyper come in and assist you to push the, the weight gains a little bit more with our concentrates and provide it with more energy and more protein. Um, but that's how we have feed cattle here in Jamaica. Um, traditional is this style. Where, you know, farmers just leave them out in pastures. As a matter of fact, if you go probably down to St. Elizabeth, you just see them standing up in dirt. You can see all the bones on their body and that to me is one of the most distasteful thing I can see out there. As a nutritionist, I like to see animals looking well fed. Not over conditioned, but at least um, the required body condition so that this animal is not being, you know, not, not suffering from malnutrition. So, uh, adequate fodder, guys, adequate grains is, and, and minerals, water is what most uh, animals require, just like ourselves. So, let us try to put that now as the forefront for our cattle farmers. Um, and I would say we need at least for these mature animals at least 30 pounds at least 30 pounds of feed these animals should be eating on a daily basis i am challenging your farmers to, to, to do that give them 30 pounds if 30 pounds of grass if it's 30 just give them 30 pounds of something to eat um and the animals them should you should see a better body condition scores you should be getting better weight gains if you follow this practice because some of my friends say not really me alone but the major problem we have is the, the, the lactating cows yeah they fall off our body condition really fast so we just want a slight little program to make keep them shape all right i get you um um once before if they don't have the body condition eh, before them them have calf they intend to keep the body condition even though the grass is low but the ones them where they really have it before they really affect them more. I get you. And what we can see is that, and it's happened to the dairy sector. Yeah. Well, we'll go by the pen. We can look at as the yeah. Come off that bad. Yeah. So Mr. Williams has some problem with lactating animals with the body condition really get worse after they they have calves. And that's a big problem we face in Jamaica, especially on dairy farms where we expect to get milk from them and they go through what we call that negative energy balance um, so this animal have a running from us but if you can look at it your body condition is very poor um, you see in all the pin bones you see about three or four of the rib cages i give her a body condition of about 1.5 and how we can correct this as farmers we have to prepare and there's a special feeding program that you have to basically get yourself on if you don't want the animal to go in so much of a negative energy balance and lose all the weight and we have more vlogs on that but that's where we get to high science and a little bit more attention on nutrition to solve that problem in the calf yes you get i get a larger birth weight yeah yeah my larger birth weight once you start feeding at that time and what you do now is to allow the cow to have less stress when she have the kid because I don't want to explain that to you now but she cannot really consume the amount of feed she need to both take care of herself and produce milk so that is why the body condition drops so because what you start is start feeding off herself to provide milk that's how good these cows are if you say boy I have a kid on me and I'm willing to jeopardize my own welfare to produce milk for this animal so what we have to do is that we have to improve their nutrition at this time you see at this point in this stage of them development they need the best plane of nutrition they need a good amount of energy in them diet and a relatively good amount of protein to push to push milk milk production that's where protein now really um play an important role is to push milk production but she in what you call negative energy balance to both feed a kid and to sustain herself so we call it milking off the back she basically taking all our fat reserves from off our body just to sustain the kid so it starts from that early time 
thank you guys for watching this vlog and i hope it was very informative and hope you can you know achieve some of these goals by feeding your animals better don't forget to subscribe